everything be consecrated in your holy name of jesus let everything be washed in the precious blood of jesus we surrender every aspect of this chapel and every one in this compound be blessed and consecrated now in jesus name we command every evil affliction that has come into our body mind and soul knowingly and knowingly through our actions behavior attitude let every evil power we command you in jesus name to get out of us get out of this place get out of this compound and go to the foot of jesus and be bound there forever in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, you're most welcome to this third day of Inner Healing Retreat. And on this day, the Lord is going to specially anoint you and protect you, wash you from all your inner wounds. And let us surrender the whole day in a special way in front of God. Let Jesus cleanse each and every one of us. We ask in Jesus to shower his precious blood upon each and every one of us so that if there is anything that is evil, if there is any thought that is evil, if there is any wound that is affecting us, let everything be healed. Because of the inner wounds, many families are affected, many relationships are broken, and many, many are in disunity, confusion, anger, irritation, disturbance. Lord, we need your healing touch. We need your healing anointing. We pray for that. We pray in a special way for this. Let us pray to the Lord, asking the Lord to come and heal us. And now we are in front of the Blessed Sacrament. We are going to worship God for these coming moments. Tell Jesus, Jesus, this is my desire to worship you, to honor you, to glorify you. Let's all sing together.
Thank you, Lord. Living for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way. Let's all sing together loudly. Lift up your hands and pray. And I give you my soul. Father, thank you, Jesus. This morning we surrender ourselves totally unto your hands, Lord. Take control of everybody. All those who are attending this live streaming from around the world, let every family be blessed. Let every child of God be anointed. Let them be set free from every evil affliction right now. We surrender the whole world. Surrender everyone who is crying out in front of you, in front of the blessed sacrament. Let everyone be anointed, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit take control, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit take control of every family. Let no one be disappointed. Let every child of you be anointed right now in Jesus' name. And I give my soul. I live for you, my Lord. Every breath that I take, every moment that I'm away. Bless every family, brother. Thank you, Jesus, for your anointing. Thank you for blessing every child of God right now. Thank you for setting everybody free now in Jesus' name. Abba, we worship you. We give you glory. We feel you are here. We feel you are right now. We feel your presence here now. We can feel the anointing right now. We can feel the touch of you right now. We can feel your deliverance right now. We can feel the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our body right now. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. This is our desire, Lord, to worship you and give you all glory. We glorify you. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, every breath. Thank you, Lord. For the anointing, thank you for the touch, thank you for the deliverance, thank you for the power. Alina, the Lord is blessing you. 
Derek, the Lord is blessing you right now. Minli, the Lord is consoling you. Rajan, the Lord is blessing you. Somebody who has got throat infection and irritation, the Lord is healing you. Moment I'm away Lord have, have your way in me Thank you Jesus Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory, 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 Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my soul. And I give you my soul. Abba, we thank you for the deliverance right now. You are showering your mighty blessings upon everybody. The Holy Spirit is coming and taking control of everybody right now. In Jesus' name. Let every family be set free now in Jesus' name. Let every evil power be driven out right now. In the holy name of Jesus, we command every evil power that are controlling the bodies of these people of God who are attending this live streaming. Let every evil power be out of these bodies now in Jesus' name. We command you all evil power to get out of these people right now and go to the food of Jesus and be bound them forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have you in me, Lord, I keep you in my heart, and I keep my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing right now. the blessed sacrament worship him in my heart the Lord is blessing you all you can feel the anointing in your body in your house in your surroundings 
the lord is blessing a man who is having a problem with the wife and wife is always crying and worried and cursing the husband husband used to do ministry preaching the lord is asking that husband to repent so that and ask forgiveness from your wife and be reconciled so that the blessing will come upon your family mightily and your children also will be blessed and they will get jobs somebody who is having a small something in your eyes and it is irritating you and hurting you especially in the right eye the lord is healing you right now magnus the lord is blessing you consoling you somebody who has got problem with the swelling on your one leg the lord is healing you right now the swelling has just disappeared somebody who has got some kind of skin allergy on your one side of your face and there is also ear pain the lord is healing you right now the lord's blessing is coming to every child of god these are the moments the anointing of god is coming to every child thirst and pray Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 My dear brothers and sisters, you're most welcome to this inner healing retreat the third day. And please be seated wherever you are and take pen, paper and Bible and let us learn more about the inner wounds. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first day we were reflecting about anger. We were reflecting about anger on the first day. So, and we heard the danger of anger. Danger of anger, how it affects us, how terrible it is, and uh, how it is going to control us, and all those areas we reflected the first day. and we started dis- discussing about how to overcome anger and today we specifically speak about this aspect how to overcome anger so there are some areas some shortcut ways maybe some easy ways if we work on it uh, it's a easy way to come out of your anger so that is what we are going to reflect today praise the lord Uh, hallelujah so i have uh, i i was also suffering from, from this anger uncontrollable anger and these things which i have uh, which i am going to discuss with you and which already discussed some of which and this has helped me a lot in controlling my anger and dealing with my anger and diverting my anger to something good anger still comes inside but now we start learning how to use this anger if you are an angry person if you have anger that is also a good sign of it good sign that you have lot of potentiality lot of energy lot of uh, capacity if you use it properly so this is very important so the first day we were reflecting about the anger and we spoke anger is a good emotion because all the emotions are gift of god anger is also a gift of emotion therefore it's a gift of god even jesus got angry many of the disciples also had expressed their anger in different occasions so anger that is a part of human being just because you 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 have anger raised inside there is anger that came inside that's in mean you have committed a sin but how do you deal with your anger how do you handle your anger 
Is it contagious? Is it transmitting to someone else? Are you giving this anger to somebody else and irritating someone else? Then it becomes sinful. So how do you handle your anger which comes inside of you that makes you sinful or virtuous? If you handle your anger inside in a proper way, constructive way, it will become virtuous. But if you handle your anger in a wrong way, negative way, it becomes sinful. This is what we have discussed last time. And I had given you some examples about the wax falling on the altar and then uh, how we deal with that and all those things. So I hope uh, you have uh, understood those things. And also anger is rooted in fear. Many people, they think, if I stay angry, I'm, I stay safe. If I'm angry, I'm safe. So this is how many people at home, they always get angry. By doing so, they think they are safe. They are protected. Their ideologies are protected. Their policies are protected. Sometimes it happens to the head of the family who shouts at everyone and makes sure his policies are implemented. So that kind of attitude may not be so good. So it is not a proper way of expressing your anger. All their anger should be expressed, but in a constructive way. So let us continue reflecting about anger, especially one by one, we will see how to overcome anger. Praise the Lord. How to overcome anger. Please listen very carefully and deal with this one by one. Then you will improve a lot. First of all, I have already spoken to you in the first day. Let me remind you once again because we are dealing with the how to overcome anger. So we will deal everything one by one. The first one, remember, every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue. Every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue. So if you are so busy with your life, busy with your wife, busy with your uh, many uh, aspects, your husband, your children and so many things, if you are so busy, you may not get time to collect virtues in heaven. We are so busy. For me, I am so busy with preaching, preaching, preaching. Just because I am preaching every day doesn't mean I will go, I am eligible to go to heaven. God will look at how many virtues I collected the wealth I have collected in heaven. So the wealth depends on the virtues that I do here on earth. Therefore, God gives lots of opportunities for me to collect virtues in heaven. So being a priest, being in a tree center, being in with limited contact with people, especially during this lockdown and being in this situation, I may not get much chance to collect virtues. Therefore, God gives some small examples, some, some small, small opportunities for me to collect virtues and where I get so many opportunities to get angry and shouts and hurt people and wound everyone and uh, do a lot of things. And all these opportunities which God gives me, permits in my life, it is not for me to use it negatively and destroy somebody, but to use it positively and collect virtues in heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And every anger, you are supposed to express your anger provided it is going to be fruitful. Jesus expressed his anger in Jerusalem temple because he knew it is going to be fruitful. So, so the first point that you need, need to remember is this every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue second everyone should express your anger only if you are hundred percent sure that it is it is going to be fruitful you are supposed to express your anger constructively not destructively if you are sure by expressing your anger in this way it is going to produce lots of fruits it will never hurt anyone. It will never destroy anyone. But instead, it will produce fruit. Then you are allowed to express just like Jesus expressed his anger in Jerusalem temple. The second one, Jesus expressed his anger in front of a man 
who was had, who had the withered hand jesus asked the people is it lawful to he uh, uh, heal a person on the sin uh, let us read from this uh, gospel of mark chapter 3 verse 5 gospel of mark chapter 3 verse 5 let us read mark 3 5 we read like this 3 4 is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the sabbath to save life or to kill but they were silent and then jesus said he looked up looked around at them with anger Jesus was so angry and he expressed his anger. How? Stretch out your hand. Jesus asked them to ask him to stretch out his hand. He stretched out his hand and his hand was restored. So Jesus expressed his anger through healing. His healing in this case was an expression of his anger. Just like Mother Teresa, she saw the injustice that is being done to the poor people. Therefore, she expressed her anger by coming out of the convent and moving around the peop among the people and taking care of them, leaving, loving them, caring them, saving them, sharing the love with them. By doing so, she was expressing her anger which she had inside against the injustice done to the people and she expressed it positively and constructively. As a result, the missionaries of charity sisters were formed around the world and doing lots of good things. So expression of anger in a constructive way produces lots of fruits. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We should be angry. We should express our anger in a divine way, godly way. Praise the Lord. I explained to you the other day, when ISIS terrorists were attacking so many Christians, so many people who are hurt and wounded. And so many people who are affected, destroyed. I was so angry with this ISIS terrorist. And also when we listen to so many injustice being done in different places, we feel angry at them. Sometimes we also feel angry at the church leaders who speak many things sometimes against our desire against what we think right then we get angry at them we want to take revenge we want to speak against them we want to degrade their position but my dear brothers and sisters if there is evil if there is negative things we should be angry but at the same time how do you express your anger is very important. If you express your anger negatively, what is the difference between you and the other person? Who is right in front of God? My dear brothers and sisters, if the ISIS terrorists are attacking Christians, we go and attack the ISIS terrorists just like some countries do. My dear brothers and sisters, of course, the, as Pope Francis said, unjust invaders should be stopped. That is the position of the church. But at the same time, as a human beings, we are not allowed to take another terrorism in our hand and start attacking them. The best way as normal human beings who may not have the capacity to go and stop these unjust invaders in, in, uh, in our own way, the best way is declare fasting. I told you one day these ISIS terrorists were attacking Christians. I was so angry. I, do, I wanted to express my anger. And then I saw one priest. He declared 40 days of fasting. He was so angry at these ISIS terrorists and he declared fasting for the conversion of all these people. Then I was so happy because that's the best way to react. That's the best way to express our anger. And as a result... You know what happened to the ISIS. May not be just because of these 40 days of fasting. Likewise, there may be so many people who must have prayed and fasted. And as a result, their power, strength reduced. My dear brothers and sisters, the same way when you see so many tragedies happening around the world. So many evil things are taking place in the, in the different parts of the world. Let us, let us ask Jesus, ask him. Let us ask him to come and take control. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. 
we need to react we need to express our anger in a constructive way sometimes this must be this should be our policy especially when it happens in our catholic church in our church sometimes when you feel that some evil is taking place some evil is controlling then there is no meaning in propagating evil thoughts against the church against the leaders of the church even if they are wrong it is our duty to deal with the situation not out of passion not out of anger but express our anger in a constructive and most suitable most acceptable for god the way which is acceptable for god that is the best way especially when it comes to the church the best way to react the best way to show our anger against the wrong things even wrong teachings and wrong informations which may be we think against the teaching of the church the best way to express is declare fasting and prayer and kneel down and lift up the hands and say lord let the holy spirit come and take control of the church and the leaders of the church and everyone be filled with the holy spirit that is the best way my dear brothers and sisters and that is the most accept accepted way in front of god praise the lord all the other ways need not be producing good fruit but instead it may create divisions confusions and even many people may lose faith therefore my dear brothers and sisters we have to be very careful in this most modern world especially with lots of social medias propagating wrong things and wrong interpretations wrong things we have to be very prudent don't behave and don't react out of passion but only out of zeal for the kingdom of god not out of passion in the process of reacting out of passion we may commit sin we may we may stand against the command of god we may go against the teaching of jesus in the name of protecting the teaching of jesus we may go against the some of the teachings of jesus therefore we have to be prudent praise the lord hallelujah so my dear brothers and sisters this is one thing that we need to remember the first point every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue the second point we should express our anger but only constructively only if you are 100% sure that it is going to produce fruits it is fruitful praise the lord and the third one i have explained to you with one of my experiences in the seminary i told you there were 30 people in my batch out of these 30 people one was always disturbing me and always hurting me and i went to complain to the priest but the priest said you have to forgive you that forgive that brother i went forgive and for asking forgiveness from him and he forgave me and said don't repeat it but in fact he did mistake to me he insulted me he hurt me i never did anything against him but still i had to go and ask forgiveness because i wanted to be good and i wanted to be holy and therefore the priest told me you have to do it because jesus told us to do even if someone has something against you you should go and ask forgiveness from them first don't wait the wait for them to come praise the lord and at the end when he was irritating me more then i went and complained to the spiritual father then the spiritual father told me one sentence he is not tired of doing bad to you why are you getting tired of doing good to them he is not tired of doing bad to you why are you getting tired of doing good to them this really disturbed me and he said my spiritual father said looking at the way he behaves he's so faithful and committed in doing work bad to you but you are not so committed and faithful in doing good to him you do good to him forgiveness to him one or two days and third day you are angry but he he always hurting you never he is so faithful in doing that the lord said and the spiritual father said the evil people are so committed in doing what he, they are doing 
for example those who are addicted to bad habits they do faithfully addicted to bad habits every day they continue in doing it those who are drunkards even if they don't have money they will borrow money and will go for drinking they will make sure somehow they get drinking every day they are so committed those who are watching pornography dirty videos they won't be satisfied with one or two days the more they watch the more they are committed and they continue 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 and then get addicted to it the same way those who use swearing words abusive words those who do evil they are so committed what about those who do good are you getting addicted to doing good are you are you for those who are fasting are you getting addicted to fasting and we are not so committed with those who are doing charity after doing charity for some time we get tired those who are doing prayer after praying for some time we get tired but at the same time those who are going to the gym every morning doing exercise lifting standing jumping walking crawling and so many actions they are not tired but the same people when they get up early morning to kneel down and pray the divine mercy chaplet every day within 3 days they are tired praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters this is what we say you know it is very easy to go against the current of the river but it is sorry it is very easy to go according to the current of the river it is very difficult to go against the current of the river always remember in order to climb the 10 story building we need either staircase or lift or a ladder three of these we need in order to climb the 10 story building but to come down from the 10 story building we don't need anything just jump we'll reach fast it's very easy no hard work nothing just jump but to climb it is not easy we need ladder we need a staircase we need lift the same way to commit sin is very easy no hard work just jump to go down to the pit but to go up towards heaven we need the grace of god we need the staircase we need the lift we need the intervention of god it is not so easy but it, if you have grace it is easy you just go in the lift praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters therefore this is very important this world they are very committed this world is very committed and faithful in doing bad but we the christians we should be committed and faithful in doing good 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 that is why jesus said if someone does something against you forgive them not seven times those days according to the jewish understanding they are supposed to forgive three times maximum but saint peter when he came and asked jesus jesus is it enough that i forgive my brother seven times so peter was so happy because he is so generous instead of three peter is he peter says is it okay to give seven times then jesus said jesus disappointed him jesus said not seven times seven seven d times that means go on forgiving 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 till your death not till his death till your death you have to forgive praise the lord hallelujah so this seems to be very difficult but at the same time my dear brothers and sisters that is christianity do not mince words do not adulterate the teaching of the lord we have to forgive 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 and if at all if you die die in forgiveness praise the lord that is why galatians chapter 6 verse 9 Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 it says very clearly Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 let us read so let us not grow weary in doing what is right for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus thank you lord praise you lord hallelujah hallelujah 
my dear brothers and sisters so the third point if they are not tired of doing bad to you why are you getting tired of doing good if your husband is always irritating you should be always loving if your wife is always irritating always hurting always wounding we should become always loving forgiving love giving forgiving how long maximum until we die praise the lord so when i say this many people may not agree with me but just let's read this word of god let us read this word of god hebrew chapter 12 hebrew chapter 12 we read like this verse 3 onwards 4 12 for we read consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart was for in your struggle against sin you have not at resisted to the point of shedding your blood in your struggle against sin you have not at resisted to the point of shedding your blood this is what the church teaches the bible teaches but at the same time sometimes if your husband your wife is dangerous for your life harming you attacking you physically torturing you you have the freedom to go and abide by the law of the country and follow it and go go accordingly but at the same time in your heart you should forgive him even if the government involves and the police involves and try to separate you even when those moments you should be able to forgive your life partner and accept accept at least in your heart if you go physically you may be tortured if you go physically to express your love you may be tortured or attacked but at the same time in your heart wherever you are even when you are forcefully separated because of the situation because of the circumstances please make sure from your heart you have forgiven your husband forgiven your wife forgiven your family members whoever may be they are praise the lord so there should be forgiveness that is most important in your struggle against sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood praise the lord so this is the third point if you are not tired of doing evil if they are not tired of doing evil why are you tired of doing good praise the lord the fourth point in order to overcome anger how to deal with the anger in order to overcome anger what are we supposed to do i'll give you an example which i happened to hear from father george panekel so this story goes like this it's a very interesting story and uh, one day one lady came to father and said father i want you to pray for me so that i may be able to sell my property then father said why do you want to sell your property then he she said father my neighbor is a big headache my neighbor always come and shouts at me always come and abuse me always speaking all bad words against me early morning he gets up she that family the whole family husband and wife both of them in turn they gets up and stand next to our uh, boundary and use all swearing words abusive words and language and speak against me i don't like to listen any bad words i hate bad words i don't want to listen to all these i desire i want to set, go away from that place and go and settle somewhere else and live peacefully then father said we will try to speak to your neighbors don't sell the property now it's not easy to get the new property your house is in a very good place then she said father please don't there is no meaning in uh, dealing with them then father said okay la- let me go and speak to her, the whole family then this lady said father please don't speak because you will speak and go but the next day they will increase their volume they will increase their bad ha- bad words and she said father we spoke to our parish priest parish priest spoke came and spoke to them and tried to pacify them and then parish priest left the next day they increased the quality and quantity of the bad words 
So it was too much. And we informed the police. Police came and spoke to them. But the next day, again, they increased the quality and quantity of the bad words. Father, we are tired. We have no option but sell the property and go away. Then father said, okay, I'll give you a homework. After this homework, you are free to sell your property and go and I will pray for you. But now I'm going to give you a homework. You have to do it sincerely. Then this lady agreed. Then she asked father, father, what is the homework? Then father gave one notebook and pen and said, today is Saturday. You go home and then every day you write down every bad words that they speak. One bad word, when the second come comes, second bad word. If the same bad word is repeated, then you have to write down how many times it is repeated. And write down all these bad words and then come to me on Wednesday afternoon this time. And collect all these bad words. For each bad word, I will give you 5 rupees Indian, Indian currency. For each bad word, I will give you 5. 5 rupees each. So if it is 100 bad words, then 500 rupees. So likewise, so you collect all the bad words and come to me. Then she said, Father, are you joking? Then father said, No, I'm not joking. I'm very serious. Then she was happy. She collected the notebook and ran to home. Instead of going inside the home, she went straight to the neighbors at that boundary and made her, uh, she made noise to make the, the neighbors to know that she's, she's there so that they can come and shout at her. And then she, she went on standing there and then nobody came. No one called her. No one spoke bad words. Then she was disappointed. She tried her best to make some noise so that the neighbor know that she is alive, she is there, they will, so that they will come and shout at her and use abusive words. But the neighbors did not come because they had some gust that, that day in their home. Therefore, they were busy with that. So they didn't come and speak any bad words to them, to this lady. So this lady, that day, she, she was so disappointed because there was no bad words. And the next day, early morning, she got up. She got up and she was standing there waiting. And the next day, early morning, the neighbors, they got up, they started speaking all bad words, one by one. When the first bad word came, this lady took the pen and paper and started writing down and she was so happy to hear that bad word. And then she was eagerly waiting for the second one. When the second one came, she wrote it down. Then third one, fourth one. And she was eagerly waiting for the next one. The more the bad words came, the more she was happy inside. And then she collected maximum bad, bad words which that neighbor was talking. And in between, in the meanwhile, they took some break interval time. But this lady was not ready to take interval because she wanted more bad words. And this family went on speaking all bad words and she wrote it down. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, she collected maximum bad words and then came running to the father. And she, that day, in fact, since she did not react in any way but silently writing down, the neighbors did not speak much bad words but they did only uh, speak only some. And then this lady came to father and said, Father, I have come. Then father said, did you get some bad words? Then she said, yes, father. How many you got? And then she said, father, this time I don't know what happened to them. They didn't speak much bad words, but I only got around 250 bad words, father. I only got 250 bad words. She was a little disappointed. She seems to be disappointed. Then father looked at her and said, my dear sister, I just wanted to teach you only one thing. I told you, you told me, you cannot tolerate any bad words. You are planning to sell the property and go away from that place because you could not tolerate even a single bad word. But now you say, 
you got only 250 bad words you are so disappointed that you got only 250 that means now you enjoy listening to the bad words you are happy to get more bad words how come you change fast four days ago you told me you, you, you hate bad words but now you say you got only 250 bad words you wanted more how did you change then father himself said earlier when you listened to the bad word you only heard the bad word and you were thinking about the bad word but now when you listen to the bad word you are not thinking about the bad word but you are seeing five five rupees and you are thinking about five rupees therefore bad word is not a bad word for you it became good good news for you therefore my dear brothers and sisters father said to this lady it is not your neighbor's problem they will go on speaking bad words but your attitude towards this has to change for every hurting word there is a promise attached to it every time when you are asked to forgive there is a promise god is giving you for example jesus said forgive you will be forgiven forgive you will be forgiven love your enemies you will be loved by the heavenly father forgive your prayer will be heard forgive your sickness will be healed that means every time when speak god speak about forgiveness and coming down not reacting not showing your anger but instead you accept it wholeheartedly then there is a promise attached to it there is a promise attached to every time when you forgive your enemy what is the promise forgive that is your action what is the promise you will be forgiven another forgive action what is the promise your sins will be forgiven another occasion jesus said forgive what is the promise your prayer will be heard your prayer will be heard another occasion bible says forgive your sickness will be healed that is the promise your sickness will be healed so what are we supposed to do when somebody hurts you wounds you insult you abuse you using bad words don't concentrate on what what they have done to you concentrate on the promise of god concentrate on what god has promised to you concentrate what god is going to do for you then you will love this there is a promise attached to every time when you forgive please do take it praise the lord so this is the first fourth point behind every forgiveness there is a promise attached to it don't focus on the hurt but focus on the promise don't focus on the hurt but focus on the promise each time when you forgive your husband each time when you forgive your wife don't think about what he has done against you what she has done against you but think about what god is going to do for you look at the promise of god along with every forgiveness there is a promise of god attached praise the lord many time we are not able to forgive certain people and accept them because we are focusing on what they have done to us we are focusing on what they have spoken to us we are focusing on what who are they who they are and how they are but god is asking us your attitude towards the situation you have to change don't look at them and what they are doing but look at god look at god and see what he is going to do in your life because you are forgiving every occasion when you get an opportunity where you see god is angry sorry you have unforgiveness every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue remember and remember when someone hurts you don't look at the hurt but look at the promise attached to it praise the lord hallelujah 
thank you jesus praise to jesus abba father thank you we praise you we worship you we give you glory hallelujah jesus master how mercy on me jesus master how mercy on me jesus master how mercy on me hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now my dear brothers and sisters therefore this is very important we have to focus on the good aspects now we have already discussed four points the first one every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue second we should express our anger constructively and third one if they are not tired of doing good, bad to you why are you getting tired of doing good to them the fourth one which we have already spoken right now that is these focus on not the hurt and wound that others are giving you but focus on the promise which is attached to every unforgiveness every time when you forgive there is a promise attached to it god's promise focus on that promise you will be blessed that is the fourth point and now the fifth one this is something which happened to me so i would like to share with you please do listen very carefully it was some years ago almost 6 years ago the beginning of the divine retreat center ramskate this ramskate divine retreat center is established almost 6 years ago uh, 2014 march 16 that was the day we inaugurated this retreat center the first ever retreat center in uk the divine retreat center uh, vincentian retreat center the first one in uk is here in ramsgate uk it was about 6 years ago i remember after the inauguration the first retreat that we had here we had a residential retreat here first and that was for that 12 people came that was the first number we got for the residential retreat the 12 people and that was the first time just like 12 disciples and after that we had retreats every week and every weekend just before the lockdown started we had retreat every weekend and we used to get more than 100 people the maximum capacity of this divinity center every week for the retreat The Lord has blessed this retreat center for the last six years. I remember the first year we didn't have much uh, volunteers to help us because this was first; it's only the beginning stage. And I remember there was once once there was two retreats simultaneously taking place, one here in uh, in this. in this building there is another building next to this build, in the same compound but another building uh, outside this building so there is a auditorium there small hall which can contain 150 people here also we have another hall 150 people so one day there was not many volunteers staying us staying here with us only some people who was staying because father george asked them to pray uh, stay there for one or two days in prayer so only one or two families were staying here those days and i remember one day i was going to the other hall to clean the hall to prepare it for the next retreat that was supposed to take place the next day so i was going to wash and clean and keep everything arranged so i looked around for if there is anybody to help but there were some people but they were in prayer so i didn't want to disturb so i was i was, was as i was going out i saw one man standing outside he had come to pray so i asked him are you free then he said yes father i'm free and then i told him can you come and help me then he said father i'm come i'm i will come but give me 2 minutes i'll go and come i will go to my room and come give me 2 minutes then i said okay you take your 2 minutes i will go and start so i went to the hall and i started cleaning and then i waited for this two, uh, the mean the, this man who said 2 minutes i waited for 2 minutes then 5 minutes then 10 minutes then half an hour and he is not seen at all 
Then there was a small boy who was helping me. I told him, you know, that man, he said he's going to come and help me two mi in two minutes. He's not seen. Can you go and check? Then this boy came running and checked the whole building. And then he went to the chapel. There was a small chapel. He went to the chapel and he saw, the, saw him sitting there, kneeling down, lean, kneeling down and lifting up the hands. Then he came running to me and said, Father, that man is there kneeling down and praying. Then I was very angry because he told me in two minutes he's going to come and help me. But now he's sitting, kneeling down and praying. I was really angry because he cheated me. He promised me and he did not fulfill it. I was so angry. Then I was, when I was getting angry in my mind about, against him, then suddenly another person, he heard that I'm cleaning there. He, somehow he heard it from somebody and he came running to that hall and he said, Father, I will do it. I will do it. And he did the whole cleaning. He didn't even allow me to work, but he cl cleaned everything and he did everything. He didn't even waste time talking, but he was busy cleaning and he cleaned the whole place. But even when he was cleaning, my mind was with this other person. I was so angry with the other man who was supposed to, be, who was supposed to come and help me. I said, I, will, I, I thought I will go and correct him. He should never repeat this. So I came. And I looked around, I went to the chapel and I looked into, inside the chapel and I saw he is kneeling down and lifting up the hands and praying. I was more irritated because he promised me to come and help. In order to escape from helping and working, he is kneeling down and lifting up the hands and praying. And his prayer is useless because he is, he is not fulfilling his promise and he is escaping from work. So this is what I thought. Then I knew I will go and correct him. I will go inside the church chapel and correct him. But then suddenly I thought, okay, it's not good to go and correct inside, inside the chapel. So I said, okay, I will wait outside the chapel. One day he will come out and then I will catch him. So I was standing outside the chapel waiting for him to come out. And he was inside the chapel kneeling down and lifting up the hands and praying. After some time, I was so ashamed of myself because a man, an ordinary layman is kneeling down and praying inside the chapel and a priest is wait, waiting outside, waiting to catch him. That is not a good scene. So I thought, I thought, okay, I will go to my room. If he is praying here, I will pray there. I don't want to pray with him. So I will go to my room and pray. So I went to my room and I knelt down in front of God and said, Lord, there is somebody there in your chapel in the blessed sacrament in front of you kneeling down. Don't trust him because he cheated me and he will cheat you too. And then suddenly the Lord said, the Lord spoke one very important message. The Lord said, my dear son, you needed help. Right? Then I said, yes, Lord. I needed help. That's why I called him, but he didn't come. Then the Lord said, but I sent another person to help you. Then I said, yes, Lord. Another person came and helped me. He did every work. Then the Lord said, then what is your problem now? Then what is your problem now? You needed help. And I sent another person to help you. And he did every work for you. And then what is your problem now? Then I started to think. It is true. I needed help. And though I asked one person to come and help me, he did not help. But God sent another person whom I did not call. He came and helped me. He did the, all the work. He didn't even permit me to work. But he did everything. My work is done. Now why am I get, getting angry? Then I knew it was my ego that was hurting me. He, I told him, I asked him, he promised me, but he did not keep his promise with me, so I was hurt. My intention is to help, get some help for my cleaning. I got the help, God sent another person, my work is done. Now I have no right to get angry with anyone. But why am I getting angry? Because my ego is hurt. My selfishness is hurt. 
I started judging persons. Then I knew it is my mistake. I am not supposed to judge him. There may be many reasons for him. But God helped me in his own way. Why should I expect my help to be done in my own way? I needed help. God sent a person to help me in his own way. But I had my dream that it should be happening like this in my own way. This man has to come and help me. But he didn't come. So I am hurt. But don't I, I should know that God sent another person to help me and my work is done. Then I understood my pride, my ego, my selfishness was the reason why I was getting angry with this man. Then suddenly I got up from my room, I went to the chapel. When I went to the chapel, he is still kneeling down and praying. Then I just immediately went and went and knelt down next to him. And I was lifting up the hands and praying along with him. And seeing me, suddenly he, he stopped the prayer and looked out me and said, Father, I forgot. I'm really sorry. Now I saw you, I remember that you asked me help. Sorry, Father. I was so thinking fully about this chapel and prayer and everything. When I went to the room, I forgot about helping you. I'm really sorry, Father. And he was about to cry. Then I told him, My dear friend, don't worry. Though you forgot, you were praying, but God sent another person to help me. So my work is done. So you don't worry. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, only then I realized he did not do it purposely. He do it by mistake. He did it by mistake. He forgot. That is quite natural. God knows this. And God saw him praying. Therefore God arranged another person to help me. My work is done. Therefore I have no right to get angry with this man. My dear brothers and sisters. This is how God works. If you are a good person. If you are in good intention. Good thing. God will help you. This man was a good person. Therefore God helped him. By sending another person to me. Praise the Lord. And my dear brothers and sisters. As a man. I am supposed to think you know all the things that is supposed to be done in my life should be done according to his plan not according to my plan if my plan is broken I should calm down what am I supposed to do I should come to the presence of God and then the light of God will fall on me and then I will understand let us read Ephesians chapter 4 26 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 We read like this Be angry but do not sin Do not let the sun go down on your anger What does it mean? Do not let the sun go down on your anger What does it mean? I have asked many people during the retreat What is the meaning of this statement? And most of them, almost all of them, they said, you should reconcile with your enemy before the sunset. Before the sunset, you should reconcile with your enemy. This is what every Christian always thought. But let me tell you something. Very One example. Suppose I am angry with Jeremiah. And I was so angry with him and I hated him. At morning 6 o'clock. Because something happened and I was so angry with him at 6 o'clock early morning. Then I didn't want to reconcile with him. When I opened the Bible, Bible said be angry but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Then I interpreted, oh what does it mean? It is 6 o'clock in the morning so I have time till 6 o'clock in the evening. 6 o'clock, suppose if the sunset is on 6 o'clock, then I have time till 6 o'clock. Almost 12 hours. So, I will continue keeping this unforgiveness in my heart. Maybe at 5.30, I will go and reconcile with him. So, this is what I planned. And then I continued keeping anger, hatred against him. But in the afternoon, 1 o'clock, I had an heart attack and died. Suppose. I did not die, but suppose. And 
in case then when i died in the afternoon then i was taken in front of the gate of the heaven then peter is standing there then an eyes i saw peter and then i introduced myself to peter and said holy father peter because he is the first pope you know i am father joseph from divanity center uk for the last 200 days we are preaching 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 so many people heard the word of god and all these things and i was so proud of it and i was sharing everything to peter peter said wait father let me check and he was looking at the book of life and search for my name then he could not find my name and he said father your name is not here then i would say check once again it should be there maybe in the beginning somewhere then he checked everywhere but he could not find he said father i'm sorry your name is not there i asked is there any other book only one book then he said this is the only book then i said please let me see i also checked the whole book but i could not find my name then i said i don't think it will it is something wrong happened is there anybody who is doing some mischievous thing in the book any forge forging or anything then peter said let me see what happened to you then after everything peter said father i'm sorry you died in unforgiveness you died in unforgiveness therefore you are not eligible to go to heaven then i said that is not true because i still remember i was angry with jeremiah at 6 o'clock morning and i was supposed to forgive him at evening 5:30 because it is written in the bible that you should your son should not go down on your anger what does it mean before the son said you should forgive but you took my life at 1 o'clock in the afternoon if you had not killed me at 1 o'clock i would have gone and asked for forgiveness at 6:30 5:30 so it's not my problem it's your problem then peter said my dear father you are wrong the sun should not go down on your anger doesn't mean before the sun set so what does it mean it means the moment you have anger there should be sunlight in your anger there should be light in your anger when there is anger inside there is darkness inside but bring the light of god on your anger instantly then you will realize it doesn't mean that you are allowed to keep unforgiveness till the evening you are not even allowed to keep unforgiveness even a single second in your heart do not give room for the devil the word of god means be angry do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger means bring the light into your anger instantly don't allow, allow your anger to be in darkness i'll give you an example when this man did not come to help me he was kneeling in the chapel and praying and i was with anger my the moment i am in anger i am in darkness so as long as i am in darkness god cannot control me so i was standing outside the chapel ready to attack him what does it mean i was in darkness darkness was controlling me already the sun is set in my heart so what am i supposed to do when i went to my room when i cried to god and said god please interfere this is what is happening that man did this the moment i brought the presence of god the prayer then the sunlight the light of god fell on my heart and the light of god revealed my mistake and that is when i got converted i changed i went and asked forgiveness from him suppose if i did not pray i would have continued in darkness the sun is already set in my heart so therefore do not let the sun go sun go down on your anger doesn't mean 
it is evening sunset it means sun does should not set in your heart that means in the darkness of your unforgiveness or anger let the light of god fall on you then you will realize praise the lord this is what is very important otherwise you know suppose if i get angry in india and then i have time till evening then suddenly i decided to come to uk and within no time i came to uk by a supersonic jet and then i reached here then i have one more day extra day to keep on forgiveness because there is a time difference so this this is not what jesus told us praise the lord jesus got the bible speaks about do not allow your anger to continue in darkness the moment the anger is there bring the light do not let the sun go down on your anger means in your heart do not allow the sunlight to disappear once it means do not let the sun go down on your anger in your heart not outside praise the lord hallelujah lift up your right hand and say hallelujah thank you father praise you father hallelujah therefore the fifth fifth point do not let the sun go down on your anger means the moment you have anger inside the moment you have to bring the presence of god there don't wait even one minute don't even wait for even a single single second but bring the presence of god the light of god on your anger reconcile and repent that is the only way to come out of anger otherwise if you wait until sunset in the evening you are already giving room for the devil praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah jesus master have mercy on us jesus master have mercy on us now i have already spoken to you the five points to overcome anger five points to overcome anger the sixth one which i have told you some time back this is about you know some people say they have hurt me let them come and ask forgiveness from me first and then i will forgive there are some people say they hurt me my wife hurt me my husband hurt me let them come and ask forgiveness first and then i will forgive them there are people who say like this but i would like to give an example praise the lord so the example goes like this suppose i have unforgiveness with jeremiah okay uh, jeremiah uh, we have reconciled now let's take lucas suppose if i have unforgiveness with lucas and then lucas was lucas is from germany and he was waiting for a chance to attack me and suddenly he found one rotten egg and he kept the rotten egg in his pocket and then he was coming and listening to my talk as soon as i finished the live streaming and i came out he took the rotten egg and he started he threw at my face and the rotten egg came hit here and it fo- and fallen down on my face my whole face is full of rotten egg and then after that lucas escaped to germany then i was so angry suppose i'm so angry and then everyone was angry around me they said how could he do that and then i said anyway he did these things to me i didn't do anything to him but he did this therefore i'm going to wa- i'm not going to wash it i'm going to stay here in this chapel i let him come and wash my face until he comes and wash my face i'm not going to wash it because it is not i who put it he put it then i waited everybody said don't worry father continue you should not wash let him come and wash i waited for one day the second day the smell is increasing and one by one all those who are inside the chapel start going outside the chapel and the third day people start of walking in the moment they came inside the chapel it was too horrible and they went outside from outside they said father joseph don't worry wait wait you continue we will pray for you and none of them came inside the chapel one by one all my friends left me and i'm still waiting for lucas to come and wash my face and somebody told lucas 
father joseph is still there in the room in the chapel waiting for you to come and wash his face and he is not eating or drinking or anything he is just sitting there and he is gone out of his mind then lucas was so happy because now he is successful i am defeated he his intention is fulfilled he wanted to destroy me i am destroyed and he is happy now i am in big danger all my friends also left me because it is too smelling so this is how all those who are keeping unforgiveness and demanding the other person to come and ask forgiveness first as long as you have unforgiveness inside of you it is like as if you are carrying a rotten rotten egg on your face as long as this rotten egg is on your face no one will come to you of course your enemy will never come and ask forgiveness from you first secondly even your best friends will leave you because your character is different now because of the unforgiveness inside your character change your attitude change everything is changed praise the lord a uh, hallelujah thank you jesus praise to jesus and then suppose if it happens like this when lucas threw the rotten egg on my face then suddenly i suppose if i washed it i washed it my myself cleaned it and put some perfume and washed it and took bath and then i came and looked at lucas and said lucas still i love you you know what happens i am free but lucas from today he will not be able to sleep peacefully and he will think like this though i threw the rotten egg on his face and he was hurt publicly but still how could he come and tell me i still love you and if i tell him like that from today he will not be able to sleep peacefully praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters we read like this in the word of god we read like this in the word of god romans romans chapter romans chapter 12 verse, verse 20 romans chapter 12 verse 20 let us read romans chapter 12 verse 20 we read like this no if your enemies are hungry feed them if they are thirsty give them something to drink for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads if you do this if you still love them if you still forgive them if you still tell them i love you you are heaping burning coals on their heads they will not be able to sleep from today they will come and ask forgiveness tomorrow next one was 21 do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good do not be overcome by evil but overcome overcome evil with good praise the lord so this is the point therefore my dear brothers and sisters five points i've already spoken to you how to overcome evil overcome anger when there is anger inside six points six points are already spoken the sixth point is about rotten egg so don't wait for others to come and ask forgiveness you should go and ask for, ask forgiveness and forgive them praise the lord a uh, hallelujah a uh, hallelujah the seventh point we have no right to hurt the gift of god we have no right to hurt the gift of god every one is a gift of god your husband your wife your parents your father your mother your brother your sister your hus- your son in law mother in law father in law daughter in law everyone is gift of god we have no right to hurt the gift of god when you abuse and wound the gift of god we are abusing and wounding the giver of the gift praise the lord i remember one you know uh, once i visited one person then he told me father i want to show you one gift then he brought a small red color packet and then he opened it then i thought it there is something special when he opened there was a gold plated box then i was so eager to know what is inside 
then when he opened he took one rosary which is broken some beads are missing rusted and he took it and showed me then i asked him what is special with this this is very rusted and rotten i mean uh, rusted and broken and no use we can't many beads are missing you can't even recite rosary with this then he said father for you it is useless but for me it is precious i said why then he said this is gifted by pope john paul the second saint john paul the second when he visited india i went to him and he took from his pocket and gave me this therefore it's so precious i recited with this rosary many times hundreds of rosaries now it's broken so i kept it in this golden plated box as a relic this is so precious to me then i remembered so give me let me also kiss it so i took it that broad broken rusted uh, uh, rosary i kissed it with respect because it's a relic now because it is gifted by saint john paul the second my dear brothers and sisters when you see your husband shouting at you wife shouting at you children shouting at you wounding you insulting you remember they may be rusted broken many beads are missing but still who gave you this gift who gave you this gift this gift is given by jesus himself jesus is the one who gave you this husband from the altar jesus is the one who gave you this son this family members all what you have is gifted by jesus if you say it is useless it is it is rusted it's good for nothing and throw them remember you are hurting the giver of the gift when you abuse them shout at them hurt them you are hurting the gift the giver of the gift therefore we have no right to hurt the gift the giver of the give, gift by hurting the gift always remember this this is the seventh point that we need to remember when we think of overcoming the anger the eighth point the eighth point is this use the language of love whenever you are angry with somebody don't use the language of anger but always use the use the language of love when one husband and wife they were shouting at each other they were thinking of divorce and they were so hating they were not even talking with each other and they came both came to our retreat center they were sitting in front of me not looking at each other both are, one is looking to the south the other one is looking at to the north then i spoke to them but no unity then i said okay i want to know your family history life history everything was it a love marriage then they say yes father how was your love marriage what happened how did you start then they kept quiet i said husband you start tell me how you met her how you fell in love with him and then she started explain he started explaining how he started in between something he forgot then suddenly she interfered and reminded him and then she's in between somehow she started continuing in between some some inf information then she he remembered something she missed out and then he contributed and in between they started laughing some experiences so so laughing and so romantic their face became romantic in between and slowly slowly within 15 minutes their problem solved because now they are talking the language of love they are thinking about their love relationship the beautiful days of their life suddenly all these tender love which was hidden and suppressed inside was instigated then they started looking at each other and started talking the language of love always when there is a misunderstanding between husband and wife or anybody remember don't use the language of anger it will worsen the problem worsen the problem but always use the language of love all the good whole day all days remember and remind the life partner the other person about all the good days tell them you know how we lived how much we loved how much we cared for each other how we were able we were not even able to sleep without even talking remember those days and still 
how can you be how can you say like this now i am still with that love express your love and always use the language of love especially when you are broken and hurt don't ever use the language of hatred and anger but use the language of love first peter chapter 4 verse 8 Re read first peter chapter 4 verse 8 let us read this word of god above all maintain constant love for one another for love covers a multitude of sins above all maintain constant love for one another for love covers a multitude of sins romans chapter 2 verse 7 romans chapter 2 verse 7 let us read romans chapter 2 verse 7 to those who by patiently doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality he will give eternal life those who by patiently do good sometimes you will lose your patience but don't lose your patience do the good good always to your husband and wife even if they lose your patience they hurt you much but do it patiently do good and the lord will give you immortality now let's all kindly kneel down we are going to enter into the holy adoration of in the healing father anthony is going to lead this adoration right now let's surrender everything unto the lord and ask jesus jesus come to my life help me to come out of all my anger unforgiveness hatred i don't want to continue in this anger and unforgiveness please do help me these seven eight points which i have heard today let me be able to use it and practice it in my daily life and come out of anger so let's all pray to god and sing together and welcome jesus into our midst who is already here in the form of bread let's worship him with all our might and strength let's all kindly kneel down surrender ourselves totally to the lord where else we go fall at his feet and declare lord i surrender every detail of my life since the day i was formed in the womb of my mom until today i surrender myself totally to you lord as you draw me i'm desperate for lifting both your hands unto your creator lifting your hands unto our father lifting your heart to the lord declaring lord i want to know you more that you are my life giver you are my father you are my maker my savior my redeemer to you i surrender I want to know you Lord more and more I want to know you that you are the author of my life so this mercy and grace and Speak to me now. 
Lord heal me from all the deadly sins heal me from anger pride jealousy lust laziness greed gluttony deliver me from selfishness deliver me from impurities deliver me from all guilt deliver me from all in our wounds Lord, I surrender myself to you. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Like a rushing wind. Lord, I give you freedom to flow into my life. He is delivering many of you from sorrow. from suppressed anger from all the guilt and sorrow and affliction lavina god is blessing you right now agnes god is wiping your tears christine god is consoling you of your child with autism christine god is standing beside you consoling you helen god is blessing you Lord have your way Lord have your way in me I surrender myself to you Lord like a mighty stone stir it in my soul Lord have your way Lord have your way in me as Let's declare I surrender I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Let's surrender ourselves totally unto the Lord We cannot change ourselves we cannot overcome our sins and our bad habits with our own power we need him he is our lord he is our maker he is our redeemer he can that's why he himself has arranged this in a healing retreat what we need is to surrender ourselves sisters and brothers the way you are surrender with all your brokenness wounded feeling impurities as you surrender yourself totally to the lord he is going to transform you lift both your hands like a rushing wind lord flow inside me and transform me have your way in me lord i give you absolute authority unconditional freedom to operate in me so that you can get inside me and remove the root causes of my anger my sorrow my depression every negative feeling of mine like a rushing wind jesus breathe within like she We claim the power of the Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, please breathe in me. You take the way in me. Lord, I give you freedom, authority, power, and dominion. Lord, come. Come into my life and have your way. Let's worship the Lord hallelujah 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 Shalla ba la ba tira ba hala ra bariya Lord we love you we praise you we worship you 
We give you all glory and honor. We give you worship, adoration, victory and power. We worship you along with the choirs of Sarabim, Cherubim, Thrones, Powers, Dominions, Virtues, Principalities, Archangels and Angels. We worship you Lord along with Saint Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Sintiel, Jehudiel, Barakiel, Orpha, Uripiel, Echitil, Abrigel, Jeremiah, Galatia, Mariel. Lord, we worship you along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with Saint Vincent de Paul, Saint Thomas, Saint Padre, along with all the saints, apostles, along with all the martyrs and holy innocents, O oh Lord. Let your power come upon your people. Let your deliverance fall upon your people. Let there be mighty intervention of the Lord. We surrender ourselves totally unto you, Lord. Let's look at the Lord. He's reminding you of the mighty things He has already done in your life. The doctor said that you can never have a child, but you are already having three kids. But you have forgotten to appreciate and thank your God. Thank Him. If your children are God's free gift to you, give these children as a free gift back to God so that they may be completely controlled by God. Release them to God. God will take care of them. God wants you to submit your children back to the Lord and release yourself from anxiety about your children. God is reminding many of you how many times I saved you, my son, my daughter, from the brink of death. You met with such a terrible accident. You were in the hospital. You were in that foreign country. You were supposed to be died. But I brought you back to life. Remember my faithfulness to you. I am the same yesterday, today and forever. I the one who brought you back to life in 1989 is the same God who is with you in 2020. Remember me. I have brought you to this new country. I gave you a job. I gave you a life partner. I gave you a flat. I gave you a car. I gave you prosperity, finances. I helped you to pay off your loans. Do you know that it's my hand that brought you this far? God is reminding you. God is reminding you of that terrible sickness that affected your body. I healed you from cancer. I healed you from AIDS. I healed you from allergy. I healed you from many hereditary sicknesses. I healed you from chronic asthma. I healed you from your stomach related problem. I healed you from arthritis. Do you still doubt me? Do you still suspect am I alive or not? I'm the same. I'm the Alpha, the Omega. It's I who educated you. It's I who gave you a visa. It's I who brought you back to life. Remember your God. And it's a privilege, sisters and brothers, to surrender yourself totally to Him. If possible, fall down, prostrate and say, I surrender. As you surrender, you are surrendering not just you, your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents, your children, your life partner, your husband, your wife. And the Lord who intervened in your life in the past will intervene right now. I surrender. I want to see your hand in my life, in my past, in my painful memories. Lord, I surrender.
surrendering myself totally to you lord i surrender all let's look at the lord there are many wives they totally wounded because your husband never appreciates you the way you work hard like a slave like a servant you feel why do you live like this but the lord is telling you i know my eyes can see you my daughter do it for my sake honor your husband the way sarah honored abraham calling him lord and i will honor you and the lord is telling you whenever you do something for your husband for your children my daughter you have done this to me and you should never expect any appreciation from them all reward will come from me luke 17:10 the lord is asking those wives who are wounded by the negligence and the disheartening words of the husband to know and to repeat luke 17:10 luke 17:10 so you also when you have done all that you were ordered to do say we are worthless slaves we have done only what we ought to have done the lord is reminding you the wounded wife jesus your lord your savior the ultimate supreme god is telling you my daughter so you also when you have done all that you were ordered to do as a wife say i am a worthless wife i have done only what i am ought to have done and you will have great reward from the lord the lord is consoling you and he is also telling you this is ruth 212 because whatever you do you are doing it to the lord hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 for god is not unjust he will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for his sake in serving the saints as you still do the lord is reminding all your hard work is been known by the lord forgive your husband forgive your life partner in the same way maybe you are a husband your wife is never appreciating you she is continuously hurting you talking ill words and the lord is telling you for god is not unjust he will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for the sake of sake in serving the saints forgive your wife forgive your husband because we have a god who will repay ruth chapter 2 verse 12 is also reminding us that he will reward everything that you do ruth chapter 2 verse 12 may the lord reward you for your deeds and may you have a full reward from the lord the god of israel under whose wings you have come for refuge the lord is telling my daughter my son you will have a reward from god are you expecting reward from your husband from your wife from your children you are mistaken they cannot reward you for the great sacrifices you do and he wants to heal that wound from your heart that you are always been accused and never appreciated he knows is delivering you from this wound his love is coming upon you let's kindly as a fa- family kneel down the husband kneel before the wife and ask her forgiveness and say i'm sorry i have offended you tell your wife it's a privilege sisters and brothers if jesus can kneel down before his disciples if god can kneel before human beings if jesus can kneel down before his betrayer we his children are called to imitate the character of jesus john 
13 14 Jesus himself taught his disciples after washing their feet so you also as I have washed your feet ought to wash one another's feet John 13 14 Jesus himself is teaching us so you also so if I your Lord and teacher have washed your feet so you also ought to wash one another's feet kneel down before your wife and tell her I'm sorry I caused you pain I'm sorry I offended you Lord Jesus I'm sorry I caused you pain tell your wife I'm sorry I offended you God is blessing you Anthony God is blessing you Justin, Devasi, Appachan, Sebastian, Andrew. I'm sorry I caused you pain. Ask forgiveness from your wife, touch your feet. For every wound you inflicted on your wife, for accusing her, rejecting her, for causing pain upon her, for always. Speaking bad about her in laws. Now, the wives pray over your wife or your husband. Keep your hands on the head of your husband. Pray for him, for his healing. Tell him, I forgive you. Mark a sign of the cross on the forehead of your husband and kiss on his head. Let God's love flow to him. When a wife is praying over the husband, he will be healed, he'll be delivered. His chains will be broken, chains of bad habits. He may be delivered from alcoholism or any secret sins he is addicted to. The prayer of the wife is so powerful because it is your God who gave you this husband as your partner. Until Jesus, I accept this husband from the hand of my God. Once again, you accept your partner from you God. God's gift to me. Declare you are God's gift. This gift of love God has given me. I accept you from the hands of my God. You are God's It's a privilege. Me. Even if your husband is not kneeling, go to your husband where he is and pray for him now lift your husband the wives now kneel down before your husband wives kneel down hold his feet for every pain you inflicted on him lack of respect talking against his family members accusing him always talking bad about him I'm sorry I caused you pain tell your husband God is here to bless you. Mina, God is blessing you. Lizzy, Lucy, Christina, Rosama, God is blessing you. Ask forgiveness to your husband. Everything that you have inflicted on your husband. The husbands pray over your wife. Keep your hands on her head. Pray over her. If you pray for your wife, she will be healed of those terminal sicknesses she is carrying. Maybe from asthma, allergy and different types of sicknesses, severe back pain, stomach pain. The prayer of her husband has great power to heal the wife. Pray for her prosperity. If she is struggling with job, if she is struggling with certain secret sins, the husband's prayer can set her free from that. Pray over her. Mark a sign of the cross and tell the Lord, Lord, I accept her from your hand as your gift. She's a beautiful gift from you, Lord. 
I offended her I'm sorry and I accept you once again from your hand let our marriage bond be renewed let us again become your gifts and your partners lord i accept the husbands tell the wife i accept you from the hands of my god kiss on the head of your wife accept her with god's love beautiful christy god is blessing you Biju God is blessing you. Usha God is healing you. Sonia God is blessing you. Seema God is blessing you. Sini God is blessing you. Deepa God is blessing you. This gift of love God has given me. Lift your wife. Children come forward. Kneel down before your parents. for every pain you have inflicted on your parents disobeying them rebelling back answering being stubborn even cursing them using swearing words using abusive words being addicted to some kinds of games and never obeying your parents though your parents are working too hard for you taking care of you preparing food preparing anything and everything for you you offended them It's a privilege my dear children to kneel before your parents hold their feet and say I'm sorry I caused you pain may the lord wipe the tears from your eyes parents please receive this sorry from your children I'm sorry I'm sorry I caused you pain I'm sorry children tell your parents let god's power let god's grace flow unto you may you become a new person parents keep the hands over your children and say i accept you forgive them bless them if you don't bless your children who will bless them they are god's gift to you the best gift they love you my dear parents they love you mark a sign of the cross on their forehead and kiss their head and repeat i accept you hug your children with love with god's love i accept you from the may god's love flow to you god is blessing you jeremy joshua brian kevin anto tony god is blessing you mira god is blessing you jinsi god is blessing you shiba let the love of the parents flow to your kids eva god is blessing you everlin evelyn maria god is blessing you ann mary god is blessing you hanna god is blessing you joel god is blessing you let god's love flow to you as a family come to the lord as a family give yourself unto the lord from this day we live in love together as a family come to the lord join us as a circle before the blessed sacrament together from this day this day we live in love lord we promise you give our family a new life a new heart new direction you precious to me you my god we knew to set grace with you god is blessing more than 23 people you were praying to have life partners the lord is inspiring you to claim four scriptures tobit 86 tobit 86 isaiah 34 16 isaiah 45 213 mark 1027 with memorare the lord is going to open a way for you tobit 86 let's read this word of god Tobit 86 Let's read this word of God Tobit 
let's read this word of god together tobit 86 let's read this word of god you made adam and for him you made his wife eve as a helper and support from the two of them the human race has sprung you said it's not good that the man should be alone let us make a helper for him like himself is god's promise you are claiming this word of god then isaiah 34:16 isaiah 34:16 seek and read from the book of the lord not one of these shall be missing none shall be without its mate that means none shall be without its spouse for the mouth of the lord has spoken and commanded and his spirit has gathered them you are claiming the promise then isaiah 45 213 that the lord himself is saying he'll go before you level the mountains and he will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron then mark 1027 for mortals it's impossible but not for god for god all things are possible so you are claiming the promises of the lord with isaiah first with tobit 86 then isaiah 34 16 isaiah 45 213 mark 10 27 with memorare daily three times you are claiming god's promise and god is going to open a new door for you again the lord wants you to remember sirach chapter 35 16 to 19 this is sirach chapter 35 16 to 19 let's read this word of god together he will no not show partiality to, to the poor but, but he, he will listen, listen to the prayer of one, one who is wronged. wronged remember if you have wronged anyone if you have hurt anyone if you laughed at anyone if they hurt if their heart is broken god can hear their cry before the lord then we read verse 17 he will not ignore the supplication of the orphan or the widow when she pours out her complaint is there anybody who is hurt by you through your words your thoughts the way that you have judged others even priests or nuns or consecrated god will not ignore the supplication of the orphan the widow the helpless the vulnerable then was 18 Do not the tears of the widow run down her cheek have you ever made fun of others and they cried then was 19 as she cries out against the one who causes them to fall sisters and brothers as she cries out against the one who causes them to fall that means if there is a block that is brought by our own actions he wants us to repent and to receive god's forgiveness again proverbs 24 27 and 28 proverbs 24 27 and 28 prepare your work proverbs 24 27 and 28 uh, 17 and 8 sorry not 27 17 and 18 24 17 and 18 Do not rejoice when your enemies fall do not let your heart be glad when they stumble or else the lord will see it and be displeased and turn away in anger from them if you have even rejoiced at the downfall of your enemies it can bring lot of pain in the lord so the lord wants you to repent and repair of all these and he is going to bring something new in your life god has also delivered many of you from the spirit of sorrow fear anxiety anger even without your knowledge he was blessing you he was giving you a new life again he has blessed many of you uh, by name like richa holden rita veena lonapen charlotte hardiet megan merlin mevin melani peter matias jimmy helen jaki joli fanis karuna anub aran jeremy 
Kiran, he knows all your requests. He's going to intervene, rebuild your life. And many with uh, unforgiveness to your in-laws, God is also giving you forgiveness. Let's all kneel down. He's going to bless you and he's going to keep you. And remember, our next retreat will be a youth retreat that will be the last weekend of November. You can see the posters on 27th, 28th and 29th November, 10 to 1, that will be the UK time. Uh, that will be the retreat that is in November. Make sure that you send these posters to others and prepare especially your youth to attend this retreat through the prayers. And we are starting the new homework from today that is the Stations of the Cross. We'll be praying 100,000 Stations of the Cross as God has graciously blessed us to complete 1 million rosaries and 2 million Divine Mercy chaplets. Now the Lord is helping us to pray 100,000 Stations of the Cross which will start from today. We are totally grateful to God for bringing us this far. We are going to receive the final blessing from Father Joss and we will have the Eucharistic celebration led by uh, Reverend Father Joss. Uh, we will be praying these stations of the cross with a special intention, especially for Pope Francis, for cardinals, for all the bishops, for all the clergy, for all the religious. The intention of praying the Stations of the Cross is to declare solidarity with the Holy Catholic Church for the guidance and the protection of the Holy Spirit upon Pope Francis, upon all the cardinals, bishops, priests, and all the religious. We are asked to pray. We are supposed to pray. So we put this intention in our prayer. Let's kneel down. He's going to bless us wherever we go to the left to the right he is going to bless us and we claim his blessing for the jaws he is going to give us the final blessing then we'll enter into the eucharistic celebration may god bless you and keep you he's blessing you surrender every aspect of your life every area of your life is going to give you and you will receive you will enter into the healing mass
young All together as we sing along Joyfully here we are All together as we pray we'll always be Join us now as friends And celebrate the brotherhood we share All as one Keep the fire burning Kindle it with care And we'll all join in and sing Here we are All together as we sing our song Joyfully Here we are All together as we pray We'll always be In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, praise the Lord. A very good morning and welcome to this Eucharistic celebration. Today is the 30th Sunday in the liturgical calendar. On this special day, we reflect upon the mystery of love. Today's gospel clearly tells us each Christian is called to love one another. The most important commandment given to us is to love one another. So my brothers and sisters, in our context, in the context of family, in the context of our work, in the context of our social life, everywhere we are called to express the love of God. We are called to love our, our brethren. In this Eucharistic celebration, we ask the good Lord, to bless all of us with the gift of love. The Lord has already given this gift to all of us. In this Eucharistic celebration, in a special way we pray, Lord, enlighten us to understand the feelings and difficulties of others and love others even when they are not responding positively to us. We pray for Everyone who have asked our prayers, especially brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthdays, their wedding anniversaries, we pray for them. So my brothers and sisters, we are a family. We are closely connected in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. So whatever happens in your family, whether it is Happiness, whether it's, it's a happy news or sad news, it affects all of us. So we join in thanksgiving. We thank the Lord for the gift of all of you are, all of you who are participating in this retreat. And we also pray for all your intentions, especially we remember all those who celebrate feast days, all those who celebrate their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. I also humbly request you to pray for all of us here, all our fathers and ministers here. The mighty Lord may bless all of us and fill each one of us with his spirit so that we may continue the ministry of the Lord. With all these good intentions, we pray and we ask pardon and mercy from the good Lord for all our failures in the past. Let's pause for a while. Ask pardon and mercy from the Lord for all our failures. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, O Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer your right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, Holy One, reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Chapter 22, verse 20 to 26. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the sons of Israel this. You must not molest the stranger or oppress him, 
for you lived as strangers in the land of Egypt. You must not be harsh with the widow or with the orphan. If you are harsh with them, they will surely cry out to me, and be sure I shall hear their cry. My anger will flare, and I shall kill you with the sword. Your own wives will be widows, your own children orphans. If you lend money to any of my people, to any poor man among you, you must not play the usurer with him. You must not demand interest from him. If you take another's cloak as a pledge, you must give it back to him before sunset. It is all the covering he has. It is the cloak he wraps his body in. What else would he sleep in? If he cries to me, I will listen, for I am full of pity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response oral psalm. Your response will be, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. Response. I love you, Lord, my strength. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praise be the God who saves me. He has given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed. Response, I love, I love you, you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You observed the sort of life we lived when we were with you, which was for your instruction and you were led to become imitators of us and of the Lord. And it was with the joy of the Holy Spirit that you took to the gospel, in spite of the great opposition all around you. This has made you the great example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia, since it was from you that the word of the Lord started to spread and not only throughout Macedonia and Achaia, for the news of your faith in God has spread everywhere. We do not need to tell other people about it. Other people tell us how we started the work among you, how you broke with idolatry when you were converted to God and became servants of the real living God, and how you are now waiting for Jesus his son, whom he raised from the dead, to come from heaven to save us from the retribution which is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Kindly stand for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Open our door to accept the words of your Son. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Pharisees heard 
that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcern him, one of them put a question, Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, today is the last day of our inner healing retreat. And with this Mass, we conclude our retreat. I know that many of you have heard the Word of God and tried to evaluate your life on the basis of the Word of God. We know that many of our inner, uh, many of our inner wounds, which are the byproduct of lack of love, very often people get wounded when they are not respected, when they are not loved, and they, when they are not approved, and when they are not valued. All these situation makes difficulty for us. Sometimes there are highly efficient people, but if no one is there to approve their work, or no one is there to appreciate their effort, immediately they come down. It is human nature that people seek for love. My brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, Jesus tells us, there is only two commandments. It can be again concluded in one. That is the commandment of love. Love God and love our neighbor. So my brothers and sisters, whatever we are doing and wherever we are working, we have to always keep in mind that am I doing everything in accordance with the love of God and love of our neighbor? These are the two criteria on which we have to work each and every day of our life. My brothers and sisters, Christ came to this world to express the love of his Father. Christ was a gift given to the whole world. It was an expression of Heavenly Father's love and concern towards this world. Praise the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, each and every one of us, we are created in the image and likeness of God. So wherever we are going, whatever we are doing, whatever we are talking, you and me, we are called to express the love of God towards everyone. Often we think that we must be, there is a, there, there is a thinking, there is a common pattern of thinking in us that people must love us. You ask everyone, if you ask uh, to a uh, husband who is working in the office and who is uh, head of the family, very often when we talk with them, it is lack of love, it is lack of recognition and appreciation that causes a lot. They say, Father, we are working from morning to evening. I am working for my family. I am working for my wife and my children. But I don't 
get any love or appreciation from my people at home you ask all the all the women who are attending this service what will be their problem they are not complaining about their work sometimes they complain the reason behind is that they are not loved and appreciated you ask any of your uh, any of your any of your sisters or mothers they will tell you so we are working from morning to evening i am i am doing a lot in my home i am taking care of my husband my children i am cleaning washing cooking i am taking care of the house there are lot of things i am doing but nobody appreciates me nobody appreciates me nobody is concerned about me people think that it is take people uh, think in this way that this is my duty that i am doing and you ask your children they also will tell you that we are not getting sufficient love we are not loved my brothers and sisters for each and every human being there is longing they are all longing for love they are all longing for appreciation they are all longing for encouragement that is in human terms but in today's gospel jesus speak in a different terms the love which jesus speaks about is not that this simple simple appreciation or encouragement or few words of encouragement nothing it is much more than that when jesus speaks about love he says that you are called even to die for the other one and that is what he showed on the cross that is what he showed on the cross my brothers and sisters jesus jesus died for us jesus died for our sins and he died for the whole humanity he has preached the love with the word love all throughout his life but he has completely fulfilled the law of love on the cross so my brothers and sisters in today's gospel jesus is telling us as christians each of us are called each of us are called to love responsibly love means it is not simply a feeling love love means that you are understanding the person when you are in touch with other people you are understanding the person you are understanding his situation he may be right or wrong but my brothers and sisters but we always show the face of compassion and love we understand the feeling of the other one sometimes people may get angry with us what is the reason the simple reason is that they are not approved they understand when they get angry then only people will notice them then only people will notice them so my brothers and sisters jesus in today's gospel very clearly mentions that each christian is called to love one another in spite of our difficulties and pain in spite of our enmity and and disagreement we are called to love our neighbor and my brothers and sisters when we love when we love the other one we forgive the other one his sins at the same time our sins are also forgiven that is the effect of love our sins are also forgiven and our sins are all uh, the lord covers our sins first peter chapter 4 verse 8 first peter chapter 4 verse 8 we read the end of all things is at hand therefore keep same and sober for your prayers above all hold unfailing your love for one another since love covers a multitude of sin above all maintain constant love for one another for love covers a multitude of sins praise the lord praise the lord please to repeat after me above all maintain constant love maintain constant for one another for one another for love covers a multitude of sin for love covers a multitude for love covers a multitude of sin for love covers a multitude of sin so my brothers and sisters those who love his neighbor those who understand his feeling and those who love his uh, those who love another one 
he covers a multitude of sin when you are loving another when you love the other person the lord is covering your multitude of sins my brothers and sisters we are all sinners we are all sinners no one in this world is without sin we are all sinners but at the same time we are also good people because we are created in the image and likeness of god why we hate the other one why we uh, why we do, we are not able to show love towards the other one the simple reason is that sometimes we do not like the behavior of somebody else sometimes we do not like his talking style sometimes we do not like his the way he responds sometimes he does, we do, we do not like his attitude but my brothers and sisters this is the same with everyone when we are when we are hating the other one there are a lot of reasons in us because of that we can be hated by the other people praise the lord praise the lord so my brothers and sisters the effect of love is the first reason, the first effect of love is love covers all our sins when we are loving the other one remember that the lord is covering all our sins and again we see read in the letter to corinthians first corinthians chapter 13 First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 to 8 It is written Love is patient and kind Love is patient love is kind love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude It does not insist on its own way it is not irritable or resentful it does not rejoice in wrong doing my brothers and sisters when you love one another we are we are keeping ourselves away from lot of sins the first one we have seen love covers our sin the second one when we love the lord protects us and we are away from we are keeping ourselves away from many sins so love is patient love is kind love is not envious or boastful love is not arrogant or rude it does not insist on its own way it is not irritable or resentful it does not rejoice in wrong doing my brothers and sisters those people who love another one those who pe- those were those people who love his neighbor those one those people who love his neighbor he is keeping him or she is keeping himself away from all these sins from the sin against the law of love he is keeping himself away from envy boastfulness arrogant rudeness and all other sins my brothers and sisters when we are loving the other one we are showing the quality of our master we are showing the quality of our master it's a, uh, the, the quality of our christian life is based on how how loving and how understanding we are sometimes people say that i pray 2 hours i pray 3 hours i i do all the all the homeworks that I, that is given here i do rosary i do way of the cross i do i pray uh, divine mercy but my brothers and sisters after all this are we able to love one another are we able to love one another the quality of christian life depends on the quality of your love <coughs> so my brothers and sisters today's gospel passage is an invitation for all of us to love one another where we have to start that's an another question sometimes when we hear about the word love we think that i'm going for the mass i'm praying at home so my responsibility towards the lord is over when i speak about <coughs> love neighbor often we think that we have to give we have to do some charity for people around my brothers and sisters this is only a part of love charity as we have already heard charity begins at home let our love and concern towards the people around us first you start for your family people at your home the husband should love wife the wife should love husband and the husband and wife they'll both of them love and encourage their children 
so there is a there is an atmosphere of family where people can present themselves people can uh, take rest people can study people can pray people can work so when they all come together there is a joy that that is a meaning today when you are attending this retreat you must ask yourself when i am coming back after all these things after all my work and after all my busy schedule is it a place that where i can i can be free is it a place that i am relaxing people at home are they loving each other if you if not today i am taking the responsibility to make my home more meaningful and loving when people come at home my brothers and sisters the number of ways people can destroy the atmosphere of love in a family when people come at home there of course we are all we are all human beings we are sinners we make many mistakes <clears throat> but if you try to if you start criticizing each other if you start blaming each other if you start a, if you start if you take a stubborn stand then my brothers and sisters situation will be worse situation will be worse so my dear brothers and sisters make your home more beautiful create an atmosphere of love where husband and wife they can speak together they can spend time together where your children can uh, joyfully play at home the children can experience the love and warmth in a house my brothers and sisters this is a great testimony so each christian life each christian family is called to give witness each christian family is called to witness, uh, give witness to the values of christ this is the way that we are giving witness let other people say that this family is a family of god where people come together speak together eat together they spend time together they pray together it's a family it's a family of bond so my brothers and sisters when we love one another in our family of course there are certain things we cannot agree there are certain things we do not understand there are certain ways of habits we cannot uh, we cannot um, approve but at the same time my brothers and sisters in spite of all these mistakes we love one another that is the quality of a christian always keep in mind that there is no one in this world as perfect sometimes the husband may think that if my wife could have done much better <coughs> i could have loved her the wife may think that the husband was if the husband is doing much better i could have shown my uh, love and concern for him much more no my brothers and sisters we are all imperfect people we are all imperfect people these imperfect people are loved by god so my brothers and sisters this is the message the lord is giving to us love everyone as they are love everyone as they are because each one is created in the image and likeness of god your husband at home your wife at home your children around you they are all created in the image and likeness of god they are all gift given to you if one of these is absent at home if he, if one of his if, if one of these person is not there at home you lose the joy you lose the person you miss him very much so my brothers and sisters this is a call of each christian to create an atmosphere of love an atmosphere of love and care in the family and again we see that when we feel when we love each other when we love one another the law is fulfilled letter to philippians chapter 2 verse 3 letter to philippians <coughs> chapter 2 verse 3 it is clearly tells when you when you love one another do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility regard others as better than you yourself and again in word four when you let each one of you look not on your interest but to the interest of others so my brothers and sisters this is something important when you look into the interest we always think in favor of us 
But what about other people? His emotion or her emotions, her needs, her desires. So when we are thinking in favor of the other one, we will be able to express more and more love. So my brothers and sisters, when we love one another, the law is completely fulfilled. The law is completely fulfilled. When we are in the situation of love, the Lord is blessing us, the Lord is loving us. When we create an atmosphere of love and concern in the context of our family, the Lord is blessing our family. So my brothers and sisters, as I already mentioned, we are winding up this uh, retreat with this Holy Eucharistic celebration. When we are winding up this Holy, when we are winding up uh, this Holy, uh, this uh, inner healing retreat, we have to ask ourselves, how can I break my selfishness? How can I break my selfishness? How can I improve the quality of my Christian life? How can I improve the quality of my family by practicing the virtue of love? As I already mentioned, we all like that we must be loved and appreciated and encouraged by others. And today, is, today Jesus is telling, when you love one another, it takes place. Your family become a heaven. So my brothers and sisters, letter to Romans chapter 13, verse 8, the Lord says, Of no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. Presence. Those who complete, those who love his neighbor has fulfilled the law. So my brothers and sisters, this is the call of the Lord to fulfill the law by loving one another. So let us start love one another in the context of our family. So may I humbly request you, those husband and wife, those who are attending this retreat, if they are not in good terms, they are not loving one another, now at this time, they can ask pardon for their sins, pardon for their mistakes, and start a new life in Christ. Those children who are not obedient and you feel that you have disturbed or you have in one way or other way caused pain to your parents, let them ask pardon and let them say, Father, Mother, Dad, Ma'am, I'll be a good boy, I'll be a good girl. We want to live in the, we want to lead a peaceful, peaceful life. So my brothers and sisters, when the Lord forms each family, the Lord is filling our families with his love, with his, with his joy, and with his peace. In this, in this uh, uh, Holy Eucharistic celebration, we ask the Lord, Lord, fill all our hearts with your love. Fill all our hearts with your love. When we are filled with the love of God, we will be able to love our neighbor. At the same time, we ask God for the gift of love that we have received. We thank God for the gift of love that we have received all throughout our life. And in this Eucharistic celebration, we thank the Lord for the gift of our families, our children, our people at home, all our dear and near ones. We, pro we pray for their protection and we offer all of them in this Eucharistic celebration and ask for God's mercy upon everyone. Please do stand up. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to the judge, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to Your Majesty. That whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and true. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent us Savior and Redeemer, incarnated by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as you ended his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are ho indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and then they had willingly in his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me let us proclaim the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death o lord until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope <coughs> john wilson our archbishop and all the clergy remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them in the light of your face amen is your soul we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god the blessed joseph her spouse the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we memory to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever amen at the savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father, our father who, who art in heaven our lord be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord from every evil great three grand peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ you said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit so my brothers and sisters let's offer each other the sign of peace lamb of god take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Behold the lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world happy are those who are called to the supper of the lamb Lord I'm not worthy that he should enter under my roof but you only say the word and my soul shall be healed My Jesus I believe 
that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragment offering to God. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of God. Thanks be to God. So my brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us for this inner healing retreat. I'm sure that you are all blessed by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that may the good Lord may continue to bless all of you. And we also sincerely thank you for your cooperation always towards this center and for participating in all our spiritual activities and helping us in different ways. We are praying for you. Please do pray for us. And another one thing I have to tell you is that uh, today onwards, we have every day there is, a, as you know, there is every day evening prayer service here. Today onwards there is slight change in the timing. Today we start the holy adoration at 5 o'clock here in UK time. 5 o'clock evening in UK time. And 6.15 we have the holy mass. So today onwards our, uh, there is slight change in our schedule. So there is, uh, there is a holy adoration at 5 o'clock and uh, 6.15 the Holy Eucharistic celebration. Please do come and join for the evening service and you also uh, <clears throat> share this link with many other people. Uh, so please do pray for us for our service. And our youth retreat, and we whole wholeheartedly invite all of you, our youth retreat starts on 27th of the next month, November 27th, 28th and 29th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. here in UK time, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we please to pray for this retreat and bring many people, especially your children, your brothers and sisters and your friends, bring many more people for this youth retreat. I'm sure the Lord will pour out his blessing on many people. Let, the, let, let every youth know the love of God. 
uh, so please uh, bring your uh, children bring your friends and relatives for this uh, retreat so my brothers and sisters once again thanking you all and now we have the final blessing of the uh, holy eucharist as you know that we have continuous holy adoration here from last uh, march onwards so we continue our 24 hours adoration here in this center and we are praying for different intentions of the world we are also praying for all your intentions those people especially those people who are sending emails and phone calls we are remembering them and praying before the lord and please to pray for us Let's all kneel down as we will welcome the Lord in our hearts. Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment time. 